the seam. You don't want to get it too big, otherwise it's not going to set in there all the way. This one is, I think this one is good. It just sort of just fits in there. By turning it, it looks like I can get a pretty good seam. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start it just with my hammer. And I want to be careful I don't chip up the rock all around it. Because that's going to be holding power, the little, little flakes and crystals that are around it. And then I've got what's called a head chisel. Um, this is actually a center punch here. <laughs> but uh, I just want to, I want to paste it on there. I don't want this head to fall because then I'm going to fall on this head. Then I'm going to fall on those stoppers. Then I'm going to have to go do that roof again. And I don't want to do that. So I want this, I want this to hold. Hmm. And I'm basically just going to mash it into that seam without hitting my thumb like I just did. Into that corner and it's got a nice little V at the bottom that's going to be a lot of holding power. I really want to mash this end in though too right in that seam. It's often nice to let your partner know before you start testing ahead because you're going to make a lot of noise. It sounds like a fall. So I'm going to get a little lower in this. Okay, Josh, I'm going to test that head. So I'm Fifi, Fifi hooked right into this lower head if this one blows. I'm going to get on it gingerly first. Seems pretty good. Um, you will see some people that really get on these and they bounce and they wail on them. Um, and I will. I'll often do that. I'll do more aggressive testing if it's going to be a lot longer string or if I got a lot longer ways to fall behind me. This seems good though. This cam is going to fit in this hole. Oh, it sort of does. It's a Metolius fat cam. We're getting. It ain't what dreams are made of, but it probably is going to do the trick. I take the piece of gear in back of me, and I will clean that. It's a good way to get your own protection back. If I were on my ascenders, I probably wouldn't be able to get 
up high enough to each piece and I may end up leaving things behind. I don't want to do that. No need leaving anything behind. If I can help it. Another advantage to aiding this roof is my another advantage to aiding this roof. Another advantage to aiding the roof is I'm not putting a lot any weight on the rope. So this sharp edge here, my rope hasn't been rubbing and rubbing over and over as I go across. By the time I get to the roof and over it, I will have done no damage to my rope. And I like that a lot. In the past, just put duct tape on the lip, and that helps to pad it to keep a sharp edge from cutting into the soft sheath of the rope. And that's kind of disappointed. So once I'm at the lip of the roof, it's time to put the ascenders back onto the rope. And for my body to weight them so I can ascend up quickly. I really like these petzl ascenders. They have good Secure teeth. I can clip a carabiner into this cinder around the rope. Helps to keep it from twisting off so easily. Okay. This is what holds the rope in between hauls. So basically, imagine a haul line through here. I just lift, lift up the haul line, pull down, and that's how it works. Two to one. Nice. And this is a system that I used to successfully solo Iron Hawk last year actually not last year, uh, fall of 97, the very same route that you guys are going to do. You're going to love it, it's a great climb and this two to one mechanical system allowed me to easily haul enormous amounts of food and water uh, and I can say that I spent 16 days, 16 days up there alone soloing that thing and I was never once hungry or thirsty, I had everything I needed, I had a book, I enjoyed the sun, I had the rain fly on a couple days I got terrified by the 510 free climbing at the top with a 20 foot run out. That scared the pants off me. Uh, the expanding flake in the middle was pretty good value. And my heart definitely skipped a beat when the 40 foot high flake uh, beneath the roof, uh, I was hanging on it with a 3 inch cam, and the sound that it made was, could a dunk, could a dunk. Uh, I rather quickly got off that cam and moved back down.